Uh, the great Casey Stengel, uh, the uh, great manager of uh, baseball, the Yankees, and later the Mets, uh, called uh, Moberg the strangest man ever to play baseball. Uh, he didn't know at the time, until uh, it was revealed much later, that uh, the uh, major league pitcher, who was a, an attorney by profession, could speak eight different languages, brilliant, decided to play major league baseball and became a major league uh, catcher, uh, was a spy and uh, was a member of the OSS uh, before and during the uh, Second World War. Uh, and uh, his life is going to be made into a movie at some point, I believe. Marlon Brando bought the rights to it and then never did it, and now it's been picked up by another famous actor uh, and uh, probably going to be done now. But Mo Berg was one of the great heroes in American history that you've probably never heard of at this point. And uh, he played baseball for a number of seasons with several teams. Uh, in 1934, baseball was introduced to the Japanese, and um, a team was assembled made up of uh, Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig, uh, who led it. Uh, and uh, Mo Berg was picked as the, uh, as the catcher. Now, he wasn't the best catcher in, in uh, professional uh, ba baseball at the time. Uh, but, uh, and people, uh, his teammates may have wondered why he was the one that was picked. But uh, it turns out he was a spy. And during the time in 1934, uh, when uh, the United States was getting a little, a little worried about what Japan was doing in Asia, as they were starting to make their presence known in China and other areas, uh, Mo was sent over to take photographs. And he also had a motion picture camera. Nobody seemed to bother him because he was a member of this team that went there to introduce baseball. And uh, he took uh, photographs and so on that were later used uh, by uh, Jimmy Doolittle uh, in the famous Doolittle raid in 1942, which was our response to uh, Pearl Harbor and uh, in uh, attacking Tokyo and Yokohama. Um, later on in uh, World War II, uh, he was also pressed back in the service. Uh, his most famous mission was one to go to a uh, meeting, uh, it was supposed to have been a fairly secret meeting, of German top scientists he uh, headed by uh, Heisenberg, the famous uh, uh, white Jew, as he was called, uh, who was the head of the, uh, the German uh, scientists after Einstein and the others had left G Germany at the, before or during the time of the Nazi uh, uh, rise to power in the early 1930s. And uh, Berg's mission uh, was, uh, was basically a suicide mission. He was uh, told that uh, he should uh, attend this conference that uh, Heisenberg was uh, head to head of. It was being held in Switzerland. Uh, he uh, had a weapon on him, uh, which you probably couldn't get into a meeting like that now. And he was to find out how close the uh, Nazis were to, the, to making an atomic bomb. The United States was very concerned that Hitler would get the bomb before we did. And uh, he went to intend of the meeting. Uh, he had a suicide pill for himself if uh, he needed to kill Heisenberg, which was his mission, if they were too close to uh, getting the bomb. He uh, didn't find out anything at the meeting. The meeting uh, was very discouraging to him. But he got invited to a party at uh, Heisenberg's hotel room afterwards. And uh, it was at the party that he overheard Heisenberg answer uh, one of the uh, other scientists as to whether the Germans would win the war. And he shook his head and says, no. He says, all our funds have been diverted to make conventional weapons, such as Tiger tanks. So he proudly came home to the United States and told uh, having survived that mission, uh, told the OSS, uh, Donovan as a commander and others, and uh, reporting to President Roosevelt that uh, the Germans were not as close as we were, uh, as he understood, to, uh, to building an atomic bomb, which greatly relieved uh, the United States at the time. He was uh, famous, uh, like I say, as both a, a baseball player. This is his uh, 1933 Goody's card, which is similar to uh, Babe Ruth's. He <laughs> uh, was a famous star, but not nearly as famous as the others that went. And uh, uh, my, uh, my son gave me, has given me these Moberg cards over the years. Uh, I think I've got all of Mo's cards, including one when he was retired. Uh, he died almost destitute, totally unknown. Uh, the CIA, when it was created after the war, I uh, had him on the payroll for a very short time, 
Uh, he died with a relative, uh, pretty much uh, broken and, and totally forgotten about. A couple of his uh, documents have come up over the years. Because I knew his story, I was able to pick some up. Uh, one of them uh, is a secret document from 1945 that mentions Azusa. And Azusa was the code name we had for the German nuclear effort. Uh, so it's uh, kind of a rare reference. Uh, another, word has, another one has uh, mentioned Heisenberg as a white Jew. And this is in his handwriting uh, during one of, his, uh, one of his notes I was able to pick up. Uh, and another one marked secret is from uh, the uh, director, acting director of the uh, Office of Strategic Services, the predecessor to the CIA. Um, and his name was G. Edward Buxton. Uh, and it's to Moberg authorizing him to go anywhere the Allies had a jurisdiction during uh, World War II. And then there are some, several items in code that I still don't know what they say. <laughs> and uh, Heisenberg worked with a Swiss friend who was a scientist in invading the, uh, the Swiss meeting and they became uh, lifelong friends thereafter. One of our great heroes, one of the many forgotten or unknown Americans. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel today. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel now for new stories to come and feel free to share the link with others.